Uh, this then is remembering Paul Goodman, and this is uh, in the poem in the in the kind of an epic variety for Harold. Uh, I suppose he, this is an example of one of his long poems, and it is in five divisions. As I cross a windy street corner waiting for a bus that never comes in the wind and the rain, I remember how Paul walked with a shaggy dog trot and a half-shy smile, pipe smoking towards a drunken party where he ran to hard young bodies and handsome faces, the loss of balance disgusted him. People fell into the bathtub, smashed, and Paul stood as if amazed at the madness of crowds. And I recall once when he stood at his window, sight translating Our Lady of the Flowers, how his blue intellectual eye kindled suddenly at a passing navy as he thought a criminal beauty. Out of the French language, a revolver went off in his mouth, releasing orgasms of light. Now he does not exist. Those parties are gone, the nights the lovers gone, only the feelings remain. Another here, another now, the written word will survive somehow in somebody's memory. This is the truth of poetry, to make it new each lifetime. Pound's gold standard of letters, Goodman's bitter faith. I write to make myself real from moment to moment. How else do I know I exist? If I didn't go mad with emptiness and boredom, I confess, Paul Goodman helped me live in the present tense. Strange to hear your voice disembodied on tape, lecturing at universities over the air, and you're dead and gone, less bitter than 20 years ago, some say, more bitter but if you were diffident then and shy, needing the sweet turn neck and ear of the young you pursued, love and fame for what? Towards what? Lonely old Orpheus, romantic Woodsy Wordsworth, anarchist Shelley of cold water flats on your bicycle over the bridges, loving the pastoral urban scene, dashing to handball courts for quickies, blowing the boys in parking lots and doorways with Puerto Ricans on stoops, secret jackoffs on east side roofs, with shepherds of chance on street corners, among traffic horns, and coffee smells, and smells of urine and sperm in sacred latrines, bus stations, bars, penny arcades, 42nd Street grope movies, smoke and kisses, oh, Empire City, soul brother Socrates tugs at your elbow. Catullus declaims, Pedicabo ego vas et irumabo. You lived in sad neglect till late success brought dollars, gray hair, heart attacks, your son Matthew dead at 20, your wife Sally once apple-cheeked growing old. You wrote the facts of life and we read our poems and joked and met Edith Sitwell, noble scarecrow dyke with bird-like mask and Jean Cocteau signed copies of opium and the eagle has two heads saying these English words these are not my words and flirted with me and you were jealous biting the stem of your pipe as if it were the pin of a grenade and then I said you were our sart everyone looked uncomfortable in 1945 but when you died the other day, a famous critic called you that. And I bought hawkweed for a dollar and read those kinky poems again, a voice unique and personal, caught as in a rock for future years.
Passion slowed death of bitter pain. Jarrell stepped in front of a car. Sylvia Plath stuck her head in an oven. Delmore Schwartz OD'd on booze. O'Hara struck down by a beach buggy. Berryman high dived from a bridge. Blackburn went by cigarettes. And Goodman forgot his pills. These are the poets of my generation. Oh, give or take a few years. Paul's poems kept growing bleaker with indignation and rage and with every sleepless night that went without love. As age crept up, who's next? The pattern's old. Freaks of the western wilderness between the bug house and the bar. American poets live their lives. Some starve, though you may not hear it. Others vanish into academe to sugarcoat their lives and grow dull. Paul, with his pretty farm, tried the Horatian life. It didn't work. In a black flag, he draped his love, tobacco, wrong food, loneliness, stopped his heart the American way. Riding the glass menagerie was no cinch, Tennessee. It's only a pot boiler, he said. Wouldn't you rather see my poems? Julian Beck spoke of Gertrude Stein and the revolution of feeling. He raised black flags in hell and threatened the crowd with peace and saintly patience. James Baldwin emerged from 5 a.m. mist into neon cafeterias with watch cap and desperado eyes, placing his naked soul script in my hands, his negritude, and we had to choose bars carefully. Paul Goodman sat on my floor listening to Auden, their first meeting. Both thought they were Shelley. Ginsburg, high in the subway, red kerchief around his neck, recited Rambo in eerie dawn of 1944. Drowned by the IRT flood of words across the aisle from me and then departed for mad mind music after we greeted the future. Death, sex, war, sailors everywhere, jukebox romance of South Sea guitars. We cruised the salty seas of love. I recall it all through a scrim of decades and broken love affairs and rubble of dead friendships. Paul was not sentimental. I do not eulogize dead men, he said. You know, I find that fitting, Harold Norse. Thank you very much.